Hey there and welcome to another edition of Solve My Math Homework's Video Solutions. Today we're going to evaluate the limit using rationalization. So let's get to it. Okay, so it asks us to evaluate the limit as x approaches 9 for x minus 9 over the square root of x minus 3. So we would be tempted to just say, okay, well let's just plug in 9. And we're going to do that. We're going to see what happens. But it seems to me that they usually ask us for the limit as x approaches a very interesting point where something is going on in that function that isn't quite normal. So let's go ahead and rewrite this as what it actually means. Use our limit properties. This simply is the limit as x approaches 9 for x minus 9 all over the limit as x approaches 9 for the square root of x minus 3 using our quotient property of limits. Okay, so in the numerator we have the square root of x minus 9, so that's a linear function. It's continuous everywhere. It's um, an easy function to visualize. The In the denominator, this isn't continuous everywhere, square root of x minus 3, but it is continuous where x equals 9. And if you want to graph that, I suggest pause the video and go ahead and graph it on your graphing calculator and see what I'm talking about, see what it looks like. So at this point, we really can just plug in for 9 and see what we're going to get, see what happens here. Okay, so here if we get 9 minus 9, we get 0 in the numerator, and that's okay. Here, square root of 9 is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0. Okay, so now we get the interesting factor. So we get 0 over 0. And you may be tempted to say, oh, does not exist, super, done, moving on to the next problem. However, remember that this is the indeterminate form. So indeterminate form means we really can't determine anything from it yet. Now, if you got a number over zero, remember that has no value, it is not okay to divide a number by zero, and then that would be a limit that does not exist. But we did not get that. We got the indeterminate form, zero over zero, which is going to happen often. So what we wanna do is we wanna rewrite this, okay? So we're going to rewrite it using something we learned in algebra. We're gonna rewrite using that little property that says if I have the square root of a minus b times the square root of a plus b and I multiply them, I get what's the square root of a times the square root of a, we just get a, remember squaring and square rooting are opposites, inverse operations. The um, positive b square root of a, negative b square root of a are going to equal zero, so we don't have to write those, and positive times negative, negative b squared. So we're going to use that handy dandy property that we learned in algebra to rewrite this. All right, so we're gonna rewrite, and by the way, when we do this, it is called rationalizing the denominator, which is forever denom for my videos. Okay, so let's do that, let's rewrite this thing. And maybe we get a different color. Let's try blue. Okay, so x minus 9 all over square root of x minus 3. We're going to re we're gonna multiply by the square root of x plus 3 all over the square root of x plus 3. Okay, so we're doing this because when you have a limit that you're evaluating at an interesting point and you have a radical in the denominator, the most efficient way to rewrite this is to get rid of that radical in the denominator, and to do that by rationalizing that denominator. And we're not changing the value here. Square root of x plus 3 over the square root of x plus 3 is simply equal to 1. It is an ugly version of 1, but it is 1 nonetheless. So we're not changing any values. We're simply doing this to get a form of this that does not have a radical in the denominator. Okay? So we're going to multiply, and the good news here, you don't actually have to multiply out. Keep your factors separate. So we're going to get square root of, not square root of x, sorry, x minus 9 times square root of x plus 3 all over, and what's going to happen here, square root of x times square root of x is x, positive 3 red x, negative 3 red x, cancel out, and we're going to get minus 3 squared, which is 9. Okay, and then what happens, we get this lovely little thing where we can divide out x minus 9, x minus 9, and so our equivalent form is the square root of x plus 3. And I know what you're thinking, how in the world are those two things equivalent. Well, they are equivalent for all values where x is not 9. So there could be a hole in the graph, something weird is happening at this function for x equals 9. But remember, a limit, so if I just write this over here, a limit doesn't tell you about the function, it tells you about the behavior at some point. 
okay? So we're going to be able to go ahead and look at the limit for the square root of x plus 3 at x approaches 9, okay? Because we're just talking about the behavior. Limit is the intended height of a function. So if, even if it doesn't have a value, the intended height, what the function intends to do at that point. All right, so I'm running out of colors. I'm going back to black. No, I'm going to go to purple. So let's do this now. We can now plug in limit as x approaches 9 for the square root of x plus 3. Okay, and so to do that, we can simply say, all right, I'm going to plug in 3 for, or plug in 9 for this. 9 plus 3, so we get the square root of 9 plus 3, so we get 3 plus 3, which is 6. So the limit as x approaches, whoop, we can't see that. We're going to come over here. So the limit as x approaches 9 for x minus 9 all over square root of x minus 3 equals 6. And you still can't see that. Let me bring that down here. Equals 6. Okay, I hope that helped. Remember, limits are very, very limited. They're not, and I did not mean to use that. <laughs> no pun intended. They're just telling you the behavior or the intended behavior of a function at a certain point. It's not really telling you much about the entire picture of a function. And you will see lots more videos from us on limits, limits graphically, analyzing limits, using all the different rules of limits. I hope this helped. If you have questions, pop them in the comments section, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can do your homework problem next.